Hello everybody, welcome back to Sharp Knife Shop's YouTube channel. Here with you today to do another episode of the Battle of the Blades. Today's episode is the Bunka edition and we will be battling the uh, 180 millimeter Seki Kenetsugu Zuin Bunka made from R2 stainless steel with a beautiful Damascus pattern on it. Um, brown pack of wood ferrule with black pack of wood ferrule and G10 white liner here. It's got a cool little pin in the uh, in the heel of the knife there as well. And then uh, heptagonal or seven sided handle. We'll get to that in a second. Next up is the Atetsu Nashiji Algami number no. two stainless clad. Um, Bunka, 160, 170 millimeters on this guy, walnut, uh, maple spacer, and uh, ebony ferrule, octagonal in shape, so pretty traditional, normal sort of uh, Japanese handle on that guy. And then finally, we'll be comparing it against the Rusen Fukaku Ryu uh, ATS 314 Damascus Bunka at 170 millimeters. This guy has a uh, octagonal handle made from Canadian maple, so that's really cool. Um, it does uh, have a little bit of a, a taper on it, a little bit different from a traditional Japanese handle, um, but uh, I would say more traditional than the heptagonal or seven-sided handle on this guy. So I've got it in my hand, we might as well start uh, first first uh, f impressions with the uh, Fukaku Ryu. Uh, and of course, at first glance, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. Uh, the Damascus pattern on this guy is really cool. It's got a bit of a textured finish to it. We'll see if that helps with, uh, with our food release at all. Um, Pretty convex edge on this guy, so I, I'm assuming that's gonna help with our food release as well. Um, really light in the hand. Balance point is pretty centered on this guy. Uh, maybe actually a little bit towards the handle more of where your pinch grip is going to be. Um, so feels really nice in the hand. Um, the spine and choil on this guy are very nicely sanded down. It feels fantastic in the hand. There's no like sharp bits or anything anywhere. Um, and then of course the handle itself is very comfortable as well. Like I mentioned, it's kind of got this like cool like like taper thing that happens here. So um, it's a little skinnier towards the tang and uh, and uh, where the handle and tang come together. Gets a little chubbier towards the middle and then tapers down again towards the end of the handle. Uh, again, feels really, really comfortable. Um, super light, uh, really nimble feeling knife. This is gonna be the most expensive knife that we battle with today and generally what you're getting with the more expensive knives is uh, nicer material so better steel uh, better handle material maybe more ornate finishes which is true on this guy with the uh, Damascus finish but also what you're getting generally is really really nice fit and finish so um, super nicely sanded down spine and choil like we talked about already um, near flawless insertion point here where the tang and handle come together so no bump spaces or gaps or anything like that um, so yeah just a really, really nice knife here. Excited to test this guy out. Next, we'll move on to the Atetsu Nashiji. This guy's beautiful as well. Uh, this is the most affordable of the three knives that we're gonna take a look at today. Um, balance point on this guy is pretty much the same spot that the uh, Fukaku Ryu was at. So basically right where your pinch grip is, maybe a little bit towards the, the handle. Uh, so my index finger is right about here. Um, so maybe like a half inch towards the handle um, is the balance point on this guy. Really nice, uh, comfortable handle here. No bumps, gaps, or spaces between the um, ebony and maple or the maple and the walnut. So it feels really nice there. Um, quite light overall as well. Maybe a touch heavier than this guy, but really not much. Same size as, uh, as our Fukaku Ryu as well. Um, blade might be a little bit sh more shallow, not quite as tall. No, they're pretty much bang on. Yeah, certainly more rock on this Nashiji guy than the Fukaku Ryu. Uh, Fukaku Ryu has got a bit more of a flat spot here towards the heel um, and doesn't curl quite as much up at the tip there. So that uh, will be interesting to test when we're doing our, our more intricate tip work with this guy. Um, handle and tang come together very nicely on these guys as well. No bumps, gaps or spaces in there. So you don't have to worry about uh, moisture or water getting in here. Um, spine is relatively nicely sanded. It's uh, it's not sharp, but it's not as like rounded as the Fukaku Ryu. Uh, this guy's got like almost like a mirror polish on the spine. Uh, this guy's still a little more rustic, so um, certainly not uncomfortable. And it's a little thicker coming right out of the spine here, so you've got a little bit more. Um, um, 
of a landing zone for your for the pad of your finger here. Uh, feels very comfortable. I, d I don't really notice any sharp bits or anything on here, but uh, for those that are a little more on the picky side, you might uh, feel the need to uh, sand down the, the spine and choil here. I certainly wouldn't, I, don't, I barely notice it. Um, yeah, and overall just feels really, really nice in the hand. Cool to look at as well. Maybe not quite as fancy as the uh, Fukaku Ryu, but uh, all depends on your taste, I find. I actually kind of gravitate more towards the uh, more rustic looking guys, so this is probably a little more up my alley in terms of aesthetics. Last but not least is the uh, Seki Kenetsugu Zuin Damascus uh, Bunka. This is the longest one we're gonna look at, uh, 180 millimeters, which uh, really is not a huge difference. Uh, between any of these guys, you get a tiny little bit more uh, space at the tip. I would say this is the flattest of the three knives. So we've got a nice, really good flat spot in through here, um, a gradual curve up towards the tip. Um, this guy, again, like we pointed out, has that heptagonal or seven-sided handle on it. Um, I kind of go back and forth on these guys all the time. They're a little bit divisive amongst customers in the shop and amongst uh, employees at the shop. Some people really like the way they feel, some people really hate them. I would say the biggest um, point of contention is the point underneath the handle here caused by that seven-sidedness. So rather than on a traditional Japanese handle being flat on the on the bottom section of the handle, it's got a uh, it's got like a point here. It's not like super sharp or anything, but it just feels different. Um, I've heard people say that it like fits into their into their like knuckle right here when they're when they're holding the knife and, and makes it feel like they have more control over the blade um, that's why people generally like it and then on the flip side of that um, people really hate it because they've got this uh, like point jamming into their fingers jabbing is not a good term because it's not really that bad but uh, but um, yeah something to keep in mind um, fit and finish on this guy is really nice as well uh, handle and tang come together like perfectly there's no bumps gaps or spaces same can be said about the handle itself um, and then you of course you've got the uh, really cool touches there with the little pin at the very bottom of the handle here that's that's really cool um, and that the handle certainly looks really cool like the, the shield looking thing there so a really cool knife um, Sky to test it out. Um, spine and choil are a little bit better than the Atetsu, but not quite as nice as the Rusin. Um, so again, uh, not sharp or anything, but uh, if you're really picky, you might feel the need to uh, sand this guy down a little bit. Um, balance point on this guy. Man, they're pretty much all bang right on, same spot. Like right at the heel of the knife here, this guy balances. Um, so same as these guys, maybe a touch forward of, of where your pinch grip is going to be. But uh, yeah, really nice feeling knife in the hand, feels really nimble. Uh, all three are very light. I would say this is the heaviest, middle of the road, lightest. Cool. All the talking's done, let's get to some chopping. All right, test number one is gonna be the carrot. The carrot is one that we always test on because it tells us a lot about the edge geometry of the knife. Um, is, is it nice and thin behind the edge? Does it gradually um, um, come up to the, uh, to the sort of middle part of the blade? It's gonna tell us a lot about how this knife is gonna perform with um, uh, harder root vegetables like this guy here. So uh, let's start with the uh, Fukaku Ryu with the uh, carrot test. Here we go. I love, I love everything Rusin Hamono. Um, they, uh, they make awesome stuff. They're really, really nice people as well. We're gonna be visiting them in Japan um, in early January, so very excited about that. Um, initial thoughts on this guy, it feels fantastic. Yeah, like this is unreal. Especially for like a shorter knife like this, generally the, the bunkas and, and santokus and anything under 210 can be a little bit tricky with uh, with harder root veg like this, but this guy's uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, it does mean that this knife's gonna be a little bit more on the delicate side, so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're, if you're considering this knife. Um, but if you want something that's like pure performance, like look at that, that was sweet. Um, we'll do a little bit of rocking here just to see how that goes. That feels fantastic. Not, not, nothing too sticky either. I, I forgot to mention that when we were doing the, the cross or the, the, uh, the uh, discus uh, cuts, um, but very little, little stickage to the blade. Um, 
Rock chopping, things were falling away pretty easily as well. You know, some of those stickier knives, as, as you get some buildup on the knife, um, it can kind of start to push into your finger here. And if it doesn't have good food release, your your finger almost kind of gets pushed back. Um, but I'm finding like, as I get buildup with this guy, and it starts to push into my finger, it, I don't feel it really at all, and, and things are just kind of falling off the blade a lot easier. Um, also, when I'm like wiping my knife off, sometimes with the really sticky stuff, like you literally have to like, <clears throat> like smoosh it off and I'm not having to do that with this guy. So um, carrot test for this guy feels fantastic. Why don't we do, uh, let me do a little, little Brunois action with this guy too, just for fun. Cause I feel like it's gonna be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, no problem whatsoever on the carrot with this guy. It feels fantastic. Um, I, I like it feels great in the hand too. Like the the other thing I really love about um, Rus and Hamono's knives is they they don't go super thin at the at the spine to like right where the tang and handle come together. So you get a bit of like a more um, or I should say less delicate feel in the hand. Like it doesn't feel like it's gonna like break apart on you, which which some knives can. Um, but uh, obviously the, 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 the edge geometry on this guy is spectacular. So yeah, easy work of the carrot with the, with the Rusen Hamono uh, Fukaku Ryu Bunka. Next up, the Atetsu Nashiji Bunka carrot test. Here we go. Watch out. Carrot's coming at ya. Um, yeah, so a little stickier on this guy, um, but edge geometry is really, really nice. Like we're going through the, the thickest part of this carrot with no issues whatsoever, so that feels fantastic. We'll do the, uh, the old right down the middle split test. Really, really nice. Do a little rocking here. That feels fantastic as well. Again, we are getting a little bit of stickiness. As, as I talked about when I was doing the Fukaku Ryu, like I am noticing a little bit more pressure on my index finger as I get some buildup on this knife. Um, veg, it, it still is coming off relatively easily. And, and when I do my little wipe, it's not really like suctioned on there or anything. But um, food release isn't quite to the same level as the uh, Fukaku Ryu there. Um, it's nice and sharp though. It feels really, really nice. Yeah, going, to, going through this carrot, no problem. It feels really good. Um, I definitely, um, I, I, again, I'm not one to really uh, to, to really complain much about the spine and choil. I don't find I really notice it too, too much. Um, but th that guy certainly is like a little, a little nicer. This guy's a little rougher around the edges. Um, but uh, not like noticeably different, if I'm being honest. And I'm just doing a terrible job of this, but we're gonna make it through. Yeah, really nice. On, uh, like honestly, um, in terms of like sharpness and uh, and uh, and performance, like pretty on par with the Fukaku Ryu there. A um, little rougher around the edges, like I said. Like you, you, uh, it, it definitely doesn't feel as comfortable uh, at the spine here. Um, but and uh, and the uh, food release was a little, uh, you know, not quite as nice as the Fukaku Ryu, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing bad with this guy at all. So uh, really impressed with that guy. Okay, yeah, now the uh, Zuin Bunka, the, the curviest carrot with the flattest of the knives. Here we go. Oh, yeah. These are all r really, really nice uh, cutting knives, I gotta say. They feel fantastic. Yeah, that feels great. Um, I would say. Food release compared between the three, I would say this guy might just barely edge out the Fukaku Ryu there. I don't know, what do you guys think at home? Let me know in the comments. It doesn't, like, like that was cool. That just kind of fell apart from the blade there. That was really nice. 
Yeah, so food release feels really good on this guy. Edge geometry is really nice as well. That little bit of extra length is gonna make uh, rocking quite a bit easier, and it definitely does. It's amazing what uh, what 10 millimeters of difference one centimeter will do. Definitely gives you a little bit more uh, space uh, when you're doing that rocking motion. Feels really nice. So a centimeter is a lot. So it's yeah, this feels fantastic. They, I mean, all three performed super, super well with the with the carrot. I'm very impressed. Um, uh, we should note that we uh, we touched these guys on a uh, on a ceramic rod and uh, and uh, gave them a little one two on a on a uh, leather strop before we used them. Uh, aside from that, they're all right out of the box edges. Um, so super impressive uh, with that with that in mind. Um, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here, but. Do some little square guys for you. In terms of the handle for this guy, um, I don't really notice it a ton. Like, uh, um, I, 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 and every time I use these guys, I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I really like them, sometimes I don't. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm digging it, man. I don't really notice the, the under part too much. It, I feel like I'm in good control. It feels comfortable. Um, um, I'm not getting like any sort of pain in my fingers here from the from the underside. Um, spine and choil feel nice, so yeah, re really impressed with this guy as well. So uh, going through the first carrot test here, I'd say we're we're a dead dead tie. Uh, I can't really say one was better than the other. They all performed really well at this. So uh, we'll test uh, next. We'll do uh, shallots and garlic. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I always find a, a good way to test a knife is uh, going going through the uh, root part of a uh, of a shallot or an onion or something like that. Um, very little resistance there. Went through just just beautifully. All right, we got uh, my shallot and garlic ready to go here. Um, again, this is like one of my favorite things to do. I often find myself. Uh, Brunoising shallot and garlic just because even if it doesn't need to be that fine. It's just a lot of fun to do um, So maybe we'll go with the larger. We'll do the the shallot first and then we'll go to uh, garlic Yeah, that felt nice. Tips really nice and nimble on this guy. Um, I don't have much of a distal, like it, it does taper a little bit towards the tip here, not a ton, uh, but it certainly feels very nimble. Um, I did get a little bit of the uh, the uh, the flingy backies there on me, but uh, not nothing too crazy. It'll be interesting to see how the other two perform. I, I am finding it feels a little thick at the tip here. So um, while it certainly is very pleasurable to work with, I'll be interested to see how much better or worse the, uh, the other two are. Yeah, but all in all, I really can't complain too much about that. That felt really nice. Um, um, the, again, the tip might be a little thick. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the other two do, and then I can give like a real opinion on on the uh, the tip work on this guy. So, uh, zoo in shallot garlic done. Moving on. All right, shallot and garlic with the atetsu nashiji. Here we go. Woo. This guy does feel really, really nice. I feel like it's just a touch thinner behind the edge than the than the zoo in there, which it just gives it a certain certain little something extra. All right, go with shallot again first. Yeah, the zoo in felt nice. This feels nice plus, a little extra nice. Really digging this. The tip definitely feels a little thinner, and it and it certainly is, um, which uh, really is is uh, like again the zoo in was really nice, but this just feels 
Like I'm getting very little flingy back flingy backies. Um, it's it feels like really effortless going through uh, working on the tip with this guy. It is a little curvier, so I am finding uh, I have to be a little careful with uh, with the stuck together parts, but nothing crazy here. That felt really nice. I would say uh, through two knives, I'm, I'm giving the edge to uh, to the uh, Itetsu Nashiji so far, but we've got the Fukaku Ryu left to go, so we'll see how that guy does. All right, shallot garlic, Fukaku Ryu. Okay, so that was very nice. That felt definitely the best of the three so far. All right, shallot test first, we'll go into garlic second. Oh yeah, look at that, no flingy backies, zero flingy backs. Yeah, uh, definitely, that is definitely my favorite uh, for the shallots so far. The, the uh, tip on this guy is like super, super thin. Um, really, really stoked on this guy. Okay, we have a winner. We have a winner for shallots and garlic. It's the Fukaku Ryu for sure. Um, you know, like after after using these two first and then using this guy, it really made me appreciate like just how nice this feels in the hand. Like the little things that you maybe don't notice um, uh, when you use it first and then these two guys really become apparent when you use these first. Um, not that these feel uncomfortable by any means, but I was definitely feeling like, I was definitely noticing like how uh, nice this felt, like the balance is really nice, the the the, the, um, the spine and the choil and the handle all, all coming together really, really nicely. And then it certainly has the thinnest tip on it. So going through those shallots was like a breeze. Um, very easy with the other two as well, but uh, you know, um, we, we're, we're trying to pick a winner here. So um, for the shallots and garlic, going Fukaku you. All right, bell peppers. We have not used the Itetsu Nashiji first yet, so we will start with it on the bell peppers. Okay. That looked a little difficult, not because of the knife, that was me. That was all me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm doing, I'm doing no pressure whatsoever. Going through the skin, which if you've ever cut a bell pepper before like this, you know how tough the skin is to go through sometimes, and we're feeling great. We're, 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 I, I, if you've watched any of the videos before, you probably know like, like a super, super duper sharp knife will like make no sound at all when you're going through. And I'm getting a little, getting a little sound. Yeah. But it's not, it's nothing crazy. And we have just cut like carrot and stuff like that too. That can kind of dull your knife out pretty quick. So, uh, but yeah, that felt really nice. Going through, or taking the, taking the, uh, the middle part out was, uh, looked a little more difficult than, than uh, it should have. I don't know what I'm doing here, but it worked well. I did it. So that felt great. That felt really nice. Um, you can probably tell by the intonation in my voice that I'm not like super impressed with this guy on, on this particular task. Like it definitely performed well. Obviously I, I can't really make any complaints, but we did just do the, uh, the uh, Gyuto battle of the blades. And I guess I'm kind of thinking about that. I've got that in the back of my mind while I'm doing this. And the, the Gyutos with the extra length, you really are able to just kind of like let the weight of the knife go through on those. So, um, you know, the skin, this is a pretty tough test. Like the skin of a bell pepper can be really tough to go through. And like, there you go. Like when I'm really trying to lengthen my stroke here, it's getting, it's getting nicer and nicer. So 
yeah, re re really good performance on this guy. I can't complain too much, but uh, I'm uh, definitely interested to see what happens with these other two knives on this test. Here we go. Fukaku Ryu with a pepper. Ooh. Ooh. Noticing a difference already. Yeah, that feels fantastic. Maybe because of the steel type, like maybe the just from that one carrot, like it's still obviously super duper sharp. Like I'm not trying to say that it's like dull already, but maybe uh, um, this guy wasn't as impacted by the uh, by the carrot as as the uh, the carbon steel guy was. Um, ATS three one four is in our experience like pretty much exactly the same as R2 uh, stainless steel, which has really high uh, heat treat on it generally. Um, really, really nice edge retention. Um, and yeah, it's not a huge difference, but it's, it's certainly noticeable. Like this guy feels really, really nice. Um, going through the, the skin, like, like still a little bit of noise as I was going through, not quite to the same level as the Gutos maybe, uh, that we did in a previous episode, but this guy felt fantastic going through the bell pepper here. Um, really, really, uh, nimble, easy to, easy to use. Again, like I, I'm just really, uh, like noticing just how nice this guy feels in the hand. Um, I was, I came into this thinking like, again, that I didn't really notice too too much like the the spine and and uh and choil and stuff like that but i am really starting to notice it now that i have the three different knives in my hand so um so far through two knives definitely fukaku rio is in the lead here but we'll see how the uh how the uh zuin does in a second okay last uh but certainly not least the zuin on a uh, on a bell pepper here Yeah, real nice. Yeah, again, real nice, uh, I can't complain. Um, it, it's, you know, your knife has to be super sharp to go through um, the skin of a bell pepper this way. Um, so I, I really can't say anything negative about this, but it just doesn't have, it's, it's just missing a little, little something, something here. I don't know. Like this feels really good too. Yeah, that felt nice. Um, I would I would probably say that the Atetsu Nashiji and this guy come in at a close second, but uh, the Fukaku Ryu felt really really nice for this particular job. So I'm gonna have to go uh, another point for the uh, Fukaku Ryu on the bell peppers. All right, this was gonna be our last test. We said we were gonna do onions, but honestly, I feel like the, the shallots and garlic kind of get that point across uh, with uh, working on the tip there. So this last test on the scallions is mainly gonna show the the profile, um, the like like how, uh, how well the profile is designed for the more up and down sort of chopping stuff. So generally speaking with scallions, you want something a little flatter. So coming into this, I'm gonna probably assume that this guy's gonna perform the best. So maybe I'll say Save it for last. I'll uh, I'll start off with the uh, Fukaku Ryu for uh, for scallions. No push. We'll do the push. Do push cutting. Ooh. Yeah, that feels fantastic. Um, I was a little nervous about this guy coming in. Or no, no, I wouldn't say nervous, but it does have a quite quite a nice flat spot to it, so I can't say I'm super surprised it's performing well at this. I'm still interested to, to see the comparison between it and the uh, and the Zuin. I, I really still feel like the Zuin is going to be the best for this, but this is. Uh, 
this is really nice. And getting into the white parts here, I, you know, sometimes if these guys are a little old and they've got like the the, the little like rotten-y sort of mushy bits on the end, it can become a little tough, but this guy's going through no problem. Look at that. Super nice and thin. That feels very nice. So through through one knife with the scallions, feeling 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 real good about this guy. The Tetsu Nashiji with the scallions. Here we go. I'm impressed. This feels nice. I'm starting to get some little, some little accordion, little choo-choo stuff going on because uh, we definitely don't have the flattest profile here. See, look at that. Oh no, that's no good. Let's we'll get rid of those for now. But yeah, this I, I kind of assumed this was gonna happen. You can kind of change your cutting motion a little bit and add a little bit of a rock to your, uh, to your up and down, but that's not exactly the. The, the point of this test, the point of this test is to uh, to see like how the profile performs at these sort of rock more, uh, you know, when we want to use more of a push and pull. And I would say, uh, yeah, especially compared to the um, to the uh, Fukaku Rio, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little, uh, little choo choo train stuff, accordion stuff happening. In terms of actual cutting feel, it, it's it's performing really well. Like it's definitely cutting very nicely. Maybe not quite as nice as the uh, Fukaku Ryu was, but really nice. Like if you like the more rustic stuff, you want a carbon steel, this guy's definitely gonna be easier to sharpen um, and uh, and has that cer certain aesthetic to it that uh, a lot of people like. And maybe you don't do a lot of like push and pull cutting, you're more of a rock chopper, then this guy's gonna almost jab myself in the face. Um, this guy's definitely gonna be the one for you. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it definitely, uh, I was getting some little choo-choo trains, accordion stuff stuck together because um, it's a little curvier, so kind of to, to be expected there. But um, um, yeah, Fukaku Ryu is definitely in the lead uh, going into the last knife here. Okay, last uh, but certainly not least, the Zuin Bunka for scallions. Here we go. Yeah, um, I can't say that I'm noticing a huge difference between this and the Fukaku Ryu, to be honest with you. Both really nice performing knives for this task. I thought I would notice the flatness of this guy more, but I'm not noticing a tremendous difference. It's doing really well on the, on the white parts here. Nice and thin, going through no problem. But yeah, I can't really say that it's noticeably, or yeah, I can't say I can't say that I notice it's performing any better than the than the Fukaku Ryu was, which is surprising because, I mean, we actually, I guess now that you look at it, we do, uh, no, there's a little more of a flat spot on the uh, on the Zuin. I don't know, maybe we can show it this way too. It's more of a flat spot, but the tip's lower on the Fukaku Ryu. It is, eh? Yeah, this guy definitely curls up more at the tip, eh? I don't know, I guess, I, 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 I'm hesitant to give either one of them a full point here. Maybe I do, maybe I do a full point for the Fukaku Ryu. No, half point for the Fukaku Ryu and a full point for the, for the Zuin. Um, I didn't notice a huge difference. I maybe noticed a slightly better better performance uh, on this guy um, when, we're, when we're doing this. The extra length definitely makes it a little bit easier and you've got a little bit more of a flat spot here. So for the for the, like the push and pull motion, like a, like a full point for this guy, half point for this guy. So I think that brings us to um, two full points for this guy. 
Zero points for the Atetsuna Shiji. And our winner for today's Battle of the Blades Bunka edition is going to be the Fukaku Ryu from Rusen Hamono. Yeah, it performed exceptionally well, as did all of the knives, if I'm being honest. But uh, this guy really stood out, um, especially on the tip work. And and I feel like most people who are looking for a Bunka, and I don't know, maybe maybe correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but if I'm looking for a Bunka, it's more for that like tip work, more intricate sort of stuff. Um, I definitely do uh, use use mine at home a lot for this sort of thing as well. Um, like the pushing and pulling sort of motion. Uh, this guy st struck a really nice balance between like being like a really nice rock rocking feel, but also good at the push and pull. Um, I felt like the edge really held up super well on this guy. We didn't uh, really cut a ton of stuff, so it's hard to say um, with too much certainty, like what the edge retention is uh, in, uh, compared to all these guys. But I just felt like this guy really felt screaming sharp like the whole time I was using it. Um, these guys felt very sharp the whole time I was using them but again like the Fukaku Ryu just had something something that little je ne sais quoi you know what I mean um, and then in the hand hard to argue that this one uh, is not the best feeling um, spine choil handle um, balance point everything just really works well on this guy it feels fantastic in the hand um, this guy really grew on me through the testing but I still um, still uh, cannot um, um, give the edge to this guy over the uh, Fukaku Ryu and um, I don't want to throw any shade on this guy because it performed really really well and again like we said like it's a little bit more uh, of a curvy profile to it so if you are looking more for something that you're just going to use in more of a rocking motion and has like it still has like a nice tip on it you still do um, really nice work on the tip with this guy it's still a fantastic knife and a little bit more rustic finish and uh, the most affordable so um, even though it didn't get any points still a really solid solid uh, solid knife there so there you have it guys I hope you enjoyed Battle of the Blades Bunka edition the winner again being the Fukaku Ryu um, smash that like button if you enjoyed this video subscribe to our channel for more knife related content till the next one stay sharp